Tales of Symphonia is perhaps the most overrated game that I've ever not played. Tales of Symphonia is perhaps the most underrated game that I've ever played. For those unaware, Symphonia is a 2003 history textbook released on the Nintendo GameCube and the first entry in the Tales of Symphonia series. The game was released in Japan exactly five days before my sister was born, and so it really feels like family to me, especially since I've spent more time playing this game than I've spent with my sister. Tales of Symphonia follows the story of Lloyd Irvin, an angsty teenage weeb who travels the world with his midget friend and... The girl. They do all kinds of shenanigans, like fight wild animals, go to church, kill celestial monsters, befriend other celestial monsters, kill and befriend the exact same ninja, end racism across the world, and of course, save the world from an evil tree at the end of the game. It's widely considered to be the greatest JRPG history book of all time, due to its incredible story, fun gameplay, and astounding musical score. In fact, even the song literally titled Off Key is good enough that I use it at the end of all my videos now, which is a testament to the quality of the rest of the soundtrack. Those who are looking close enough may notice that the initials of the game are TOS. This is actually because of the frequent coarse language during cutscenes, most notably Lloyd's frequent use of hard hex and dangerous dang it's. According to Miyamoto, this is the reason why Lloyd will never be in Smash, and why his costume was relegated to characters who don't have any dialogue. Fans of Symphonia, or literally anyone who has seen the first five minutes of gameplay, are very familiar with the designs. What you might not know, however, is that the name given to them was actually a placeholder. Series creator Reggie Fielzame told me in an email the other day that he had already created the enemy design when he had told his co-workers that they, quote, need to give the design a name. Apparently, his co-workers misheard him, and thought the character was a part of an organization called The Designs, and that this one in particular needed a name for whatever reason. Reggie thought the name was stupid though, and he decided to create another set of bad guys that he thought would be way cooler, which is how we ended up with both the Renegades and that one design named Frank. One of the main characters of the game, Colette Brunel, is known as the Chosen One in-universe. This is actually a reference to one of the ending themes in Shadow the Hedgehog, which bears the same name. The reference continues further though, as there is a summon spirit that is literally named Shadow. Faker. No, he's not quite a faker, because his design is a few references removed. His low viscosity is based on Chaos from Sonic Adventure, who is based on Shadow Mario from Sunshine, who was inspired by Shadow the Heartless from Kingdom Hearts, whose design was ripped directly from Shadow the Hedgehog. So in essence, I lied. <laughs> He's totally a Shadow wannabe. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Shadow the Hedgehog wasn't the only Nintendo game that inspired elements of Symphonia. For example, fighting harmless dogs and rabbits with real weapons was based on Earthbound. Similarly, the concept of X-Spheres, while it may sound odd at first, is actually based on the Pokemon Cubone. This is because both give the user the ability to fight through their dead mothers. But it's okay, because at least in Symphonia, the person's still sort of alive within the X-Sphere. Whereas in Pokemon, Lavender Town exists for a reason. Speaking of Pokemon, Tales of Symphonia actually holds unused elements from the series. Lloyd's pet Noish is in fact the beta version of Suicune, which was revealed during a large Generation 2 data leak. I don't know how he managed to get a hold of the beta leaks before the rest of the world, but it does seem to imply that Reggie and Nintendo were at one point working on some projects together around 2003. Symphonia has many noteworthy villains, but only one made me wish I wasn't a pacifist. This monster, of course, was Kavar, the single most Hitler-like character in a world full of what are essentially concentration camps. He was, of course, based on Calabar from Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. His name is even an anagram for the phonetic spelling of Carve, a word related to pumpkins, which is where the scepter was put in during the first Halloween Town to seal away Calabar initially. In addition to this, Kavar is also evil incarnate, and also ruins everyone's day. Fortunately, he doesn't make it to the end of the first disc, so he's gone as quickly as marble. How? How did they think that was okay to even put it in the game? I'm so sick of this. The trash! 
bitch to get it! It sucks! And I'm addicted! So I can't quit!